Good evening. This is a meeting of the Northampton Public Works Commission. It's Wednesday, March 23rd, it's actually 534. Um, first item on our agenda is public comment, but gazing at the public, it, I assume you'd rather hold your comments if necessary until we discuss acceptance of items with. Is that correct? Okay. Um, we do have for approval uh, the minutes of the February 10th, 2016 Public Works Commission meeting. Move approval. Second. Any comments? Just, um, it says here that you couldn't come to a meeting on the 23rd. Oh, they and changed it. I, yeah, yeah, I you fixed said, it already. They, yeah. Okay. Yeah. As amended. Were there any other amendments? Yes, um, there was a, uh, uh, sort of typographical in nature yeah. in my part. Yeah. Not content. Okay. Yeah. You both had the same two. Oh. Thank you. I, yeah, I saw another one. I'm sure it was the same. Yeah. Um, hang, on, hang on to that. All in favor of approving the minutes? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. Uh, next item on the agenda is discussion uh, and I would say possible vote on accepting Bottoms Way, Bottoms Road as a public way. I'd like to make a proposal that we move to vote to accept Bottoms Road as a public way. I second that motion. Any discussion? Question. Uh, as, it, as it relates to the drawing, uh, does the draw, is the drawing still significant? Yes. I, I believe the drawing is significant and it defines the portion of the road that would be accepted as a public way. Right. So, so that the motion should refer to the drawing. Right. Uh, I'd like to amend that motion to include reference to this drawing. Which right. is uh, the street acceptance plan by Northeast Survey Consultants, dated 311 15. <laughs> Drawing name is 13 008 30 DWG. I think the other comment we should make for the record is that we held a public hearing uh, at 5 o'clock today uh, on this issue. Any other comments from the board? I just might want to add that there, there was no dissension. Was and there was no dissension. We received a petition that's been referred to the commission by the city council. Uh, and there was no dissension at the public meeting. Any other comments on this? Okay to vote, Wendy, or you have some? I've already told people. Oh, okay. <laughs> Fine. Okay. So we have a motion on the table to accept Bottoms Way as a as a public way, um, based on the drawing in front of us. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? You abstain? Aye. Okay. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Next item on the agenda is a discussion of the carbapenem resistant enterobacterici, otherwise known as CRE. Um, otherwise this, known as some other name? The translatable? <laughs> I think CRE. That's it? I think CRE and Roe, you suggested this be put on the agenda? Do I did. Know? There was a little article in the, in the Northampton um, Hampshire Gazette, and I don't know how it compares to MRSA or some of the other issues like that, but there was some um, discussion about on the West Coast the prevalence in the water supply and concern about it being taken out. And I just wanted Jim to, this, I would like to. DPW's um, professional comment on it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, does everybody know what CRE is? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah we all know. Oh. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. CRE, I'm going to read from this little FAQ sheet I have. Um, CRE is a group of bacteria that are highly resistant to antibiotics. Um, until recently, the bacteria was susceptible to a class of antibiotics called carbapenems, 
which were developed to treat bacteria that were resistant to other drugs. Due to overuse of these antibiotics, some types of um, enterobacteriae, such as E. coli, enterobacter, salmonella, and others, have now developed resistance to, to carbapenems. And then there's been great um, concern about CRE um, in healthcare settings um, due to high levels of antibiotic use. So the infection, people can tend to get um, infected in hospital settings because of the prevalence of the bacteria, which apparently is somewhat resistant to um, commonly used antibiotics. Um, so there's some discussion about how how does someone catch CRE it can be transmitted via direct person-to-person -person contact with an infected person or through indirect contact with objects or environmental surfaces such as patient care equipment, bed rails, and doorknobs. Um, and then it's why may patients in healthcare settings be at risk for contracting CRE? Risk factors for acquiring CRE infection include prolonged hospital stay, frequent antibiotic use, chronic or medical conditions, um, recent surgery, tra transplants, catheter or ventilator use. Many patients fall into one of these risk factor categories and can be at higher risk for contracting CRE infections. So if you have a weakened immune system, you be more susceptible to getting um, this type of infection. And then within the hospital setting, the best way to prevent spread of CRE is through hand washing and strict contact precautions um, to prevent the spread in healthcare setting. Um, and then there's some other recommendations regarding um, environmental cleaning and using certain disinfectants. So there was a study apparently that was done recently and picked up in the press um, that was done um, in response to an exec a presidential executive order um, by President Obama, which was Executive Order 13676, Combating Antibiotic Resistant Bacteria. So this one study that I found, I could only find, um, I didn't get the actual study, but I have um, just sort of a synopsis of it. And what was done in this study, and this is from the American Society of Microbiology, um, there was a study that was done um, to collect and examine primary wastewater effluent samples from seven locations in the U.S. So a number of samples were taken and tested for, um, for resistance to various antibiotics. Um, and 23% of the samples that were taken were classified um, as, as CRE. So there, there were a couple, there were a little, couple little conclusions. One conclusion was that they found that CRE was significantly higher in wastewater samples from urban wastewater treatment plants treating primarily domestic waste, which is residential style kind of human waste and not so much agricultural or industrial, right? So the, the, it, doesn't say, it doesn't say a lot about it. It just says that it was, it, the study was done, it took samples and it was found. Now, I have a lot of questions about the study. Um, one of the ones is that it specifically says that samples were taken taken from primary wastewater effluent samples. So, how that wastewater was treated is not known to me. What type of treatment plant it is, um, what level of treatment. So, primary it says primary wastewater effluent. So, in the world of wastewater treatment, primary treatment is your first set of clarifiers when the waste comes in. It goes through clarification and then sort of the heavy solids drop out and then the effluent from there goes to what's called secondary treatment, which at our plant is the aeration tanks. So usually you have, you have uh, aeration tanks and then, and then another form of settling or secondary clarification. And ultimately most wastewaters are treated, um, they're disinfected before they're discharged. So a lot of these questions about um, the bacteria that I have are that they're resistant to antibiotics but are they resistant to the types of disinfection that you might commonly see in a wastewater treatment plant? I don't really know. So, you know, we have, we use chlorine gas at the moment at our plant, but hypochlorite, which is like a bleach style disinfectant or um, other things like ozone or UV or other types of disinfect disinfection um, processes that are used. And um, to me, I, I just don't have any, the question is, are any of these effective at, at reducing um, the presence of, um, you know, of, of the bacteria, so I, I, don't, I don't really know. It doesn't seem like there's a lot out there. I mean, I didn't do an exhaustive search. I just, you know, I, I went online. I found, this, I found this one study on the American Society for Mic Microbiology, and then there was a, a reference to that on the EPA's Science Inventory website. 
um, and this was just done um, and published the end of 2015. So it seems pretty new, um, but it's a pretty good question. It's a big, um, a big concern, and I just wonder what follow-up um, things are going to come out of the results of that one study. I had a question: When um, does the wastewater from Cooley Dick come into our um, wastewater stream? Right. And so that was that was an obvious question, and. Right. Um, so it was just to be on the radar screen, since we're going to be doing changes in wastewater treatment, we hope. Yeah, it's a good question, a good thing to be aware of, I think, as, as we move forward. And I think the article that, that you referenced in the paper said that, you know, in, in more urban settings where you have hospitals and things, that's where you're going to, that's where you're bound to get the, you know, slugs of, um, yeah. of different things that may be problematic. But, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting because, um, you know, I was I was talking about disinfection, but we have this worker safety issues as well mm -hmm. um, at the treatment plant. So if they if they looked at primary treatment and then, um, you know, what what does that mean for worker safety and what do we need to do? Um, is, is there anything different that we need to do? So well, thank you for looking into it. Sure. Any other comments? Questions for Jim on his research? All right, we'll move on. Uh, no old business on the agenda. Under informational, we have contract update. Just a list of contracts that were that are sheets. You want to go through this, Jim? Sure. So um, we're still signing contracts and in business. Um, <laughs> the ones that we've signed here in the last couple of months, the first one is um, foaming root control in the amount of $24,999 for the sewer, the amount of sewer enterprise fund um, used by the sewer crew to um, help remove roots that grow in the sewer system. So it's an annual contract um, for maintenance activities that we normally do. The next contract is with Tate and Howard. It's a design engineering contract for $98,000 for waterline replacement on Day Avenue, North Farms Road, North Maple Street, and sewer replacement on Day Avenue. Um, this is a split from the water and sewer enterprise funds um, based on the anticipated value of those utility replacements. The next contract is the Pleasant Street Drain Relocation Project in the amount of $17,807 with Kleinfelder. This was actually paid for uh, by the Valley CDC. Um, they are in the process of trying to redevelop the former lumberyard site on Pleasant Street for affordable housing. One of the city, one of the city's largest storm drain um, structures is on that property. Um, so in order for them to build a new building, um, they need to move the drain so it's not under the footprint of the new building. So we're working with them to make uh, to, to sort of make that happen. We're working with a designer, but they're paying for the costs associated with it. Um, so that $17,000 and change was for preliminary design for the relocation of that large storm drain. So we'll get that money back, or the, that's preliminary money we're spending and we'll get that? We're paying not for spending this. any money. Okay, all so this will come back. Into all their money. Yeah. Okay. So we, um, they've actually given us a check um, which we deposited and used it to sign the contract. Okay. Um, the next contract is with Associated Electrical Mechanics for um, return, of ac return activated sludge pump at the wastewater treatment plant in the amount of $15,604. Mm -hmm. um, this is a change order to repair a second RAS pump that needs to be rebuilt. Um, so they've got rebuilt one and brought that back and they've taken another and they're going to rebuild that one. Can you highlight if when you get to anything, and I see just this one other, I guess, mm -hmm. related to wastewater treatment, whether it's in that uh, plan, yeah. you know, that's addressing any of the things that are in the plan? Yeah. Okay. Um, next contract is with um, GPS equipment, Keystone Precision Instruments, $14,471. Um, that's for GPS field equipment that we use for various survey locational um, activities. Um, so we update, we do a couple of things with it. We update our GIS system with new infrastructure to make our GIS system more accurate. And this would be survey grade 
equipment that we can use suitable for surveys for construction plans and that sort of thing. Um, the budget was split, I think, amongst the enterprise funds. I recall correctly on that one. Um, next contract was a time extension for Kleinfelder on the comprehensive wastewater treatment plant. Plant. Um, that is, we're just in the final um, steps of publishing um, all the chapters and submitting those to DEP on the, on the CWMP. So this allows us to pay the last couple of invoices with Kleinfelder. Um, next contract is for 74800 with waste management um, for um, trash disposal um, coming out of the solid waste enterprise fund. So it's a one-year contract, I think, with two renewals. We've been um, using their Chicopee landfill the last three years, I think, for disposal. The next contract is for traffic control devices. Um, it is um, contract is Central Mass Signal, and it's funded by CDBG funds um, in the amount of twenty six thousand five hundred. We've been working with um, um, Peck Keller uh, using this grant money to to <coughs> put these accessible pedestrian buttons in at four locations across the city. We were requested to make this a, a priority this year, and we're looking at intersections of South Street and Monroe Street. <coughs> Jackson Street and Bridge Road, Bedford Terrace and Elm Street, and Florence Road and Route 66. So those are the locations where we'll be putting audible um, signals across for pedestrians. What was the fourth one again? 66. Florence Road, Road and Route 66. Really? There's enough pedestrian traffic. <laughs> okay. Um, the next contract is a time extension with Aaron Associates uh, for state assistance support. They're a programming firm that does um, programming support for us at the, at the water treatment plant, so it's a water budget expense. Uh, the next contract with alternative recycling is for backup waste hauling in the amount of $12,475. Um, ARS provides <coughs> backup hauling for us here at this transfer station, so if we're having a problem with our truck or we need some assistance in hauling, we call them and they, they give us a hand um, taking care of hauling things out. So that's a, like a standby fee? Yeah. Well, it's, we, don't, we only pay them when they do work. Oh, paid? Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. But it, it's a standby contract, but the right. fee is for service. Right. Okay. And then in order to, to develop the contract estimate, we figured out you know how many times a month would we need them. and and that sort of thing, so I think it's the right amount. Um, the last contract with, was with Comcast for <coughs> um, placing their overhead utilities on the ground, and it's associated with the Pulaski Park project and the whole sort of roundhouse lot, <coughs> Pulaski Park redevelopment um, project, $15,111.55. So that's been the activity the last, uh, the last couple of months. <laughs> The, and the money for the, the Comcast project um, was coming from a CPA grant that we received for the park. So uh, a lot of the underground utility work, all of it, has been paid for with CPA funds. So it's been pretty instrumental. It was just a, a mess of wires and poles in the back. If you really took a close yeah. look at what was going on in the back of the park, it really wasn't very pretty. So all those things have been placed on the ground. And, uh, it's costing uh, cost some money to get people to do that. Mm -hmm. So, any other questions for Jim on the contract? What if we had named it Comcast Park? Yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> Thank you. Working for you to be rescued. Yeah. Um, next item on the agenda is the. Uh, Compost update, which was on our agenda for the last meeting, and stable till tonight. I have a little more data for you, a little narrative which I thought I would share. Um, <coughs> so, a little background in history. Um, we started the uh, food waste composting here in FY11 as a pilot program. We offered free collection for residents um, that had the transfer station vehicle sticker. Um, after the first year in FY12 and FY13, 
we started charging $15 per year to cover our cost um, for collection and hauling. In FY13, um, food waste collection was added um, as a value-added service into the cost of the sticker. So if you have a vehicle permit now, you can use it for free. Um, what's happened when we added as a value-added service is we used to have a card program, so we knew exactly who was using mm -hmm. the center, how many times they were coming, and so we, we had a sense of participation. Um, since it's just included as part of the vehicle permit, we don't really know. We have no idea of the usage in terms of the numbers. Mm -hmm. um, so um, service has been very popular, and the space that we have available for collection has been pretty maxed out under if you've used it. We have a number of um, bins up, um, under shelter out there, and those fill up and have those removed a couple of times a week. Um, we have a, separately we have a, the city has a memorandum of understanding with pedal people, so pedal people also uses this facility. Um, they have, uh, they use the carts like we do on the back. Some, some of them are separated out only for their use. Um, they have, they have subscriptions and they tell us who their customers are and they have about 20, 220 households that they're servicing with food waste collection now, so it's quite a nice number. Um, we estimate that about a third of the food waste collected there is because of Pedal People's um, customer base, so it's a nice, kind of a nice partnership there. And they do, Pedal People does pay us um, $20 a year per household for the service that we're providing to have the, the bins there for them to use. Um, so I've got a summary of diversion, uh, food waste diversion here, and it, it continues to go up every year. So the, in 2010, um, we collected 17 tons. In 2011, 45 tons. In 2012, we collected 78 tons. 2013, 119 tons. 2014, 126 tons. In 2015, 160 tons. Wow. So I think people are getting, uh, they're getting used to composting more and, and understanding. I think a lot of it is um, just related to education in terms of the, the wide variety of things that we take for composting. Because there's a lot of people that do backyard composting, but we take a lot of stuff that you wouldn't compost in your backyard. And I think, you know, we take chicken bones and we take, you know, other things that you wouldn't compost in your backyard. So I think. Um, just through education, I think more more people realize that the yeah. service is available, that they're taking advantage of it. So, um, and where do we take it? That is a good question. I'm not <laughs> sure yeah. actually where it's going at the Martin's moment. Was it farm? Martin's Farm? It used to be. Yeah. Martin's Farm Still in Greenfield. Greenfield. Yeah. Right. I think it's probably where it's going. We took it to another location previously, um, about a year or so ago, but I think they closed. Mm. I can't remember the name of it. But Martin's Farm is about the only game in town at the moment in the valley. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Any more questions on this? Is the high school still participating? I know they, they started up a composting program at the high school. I don't know. Um, I, I don't know. They may have their own composting program. Mm -hmm. They're probably not participating in what we do here just okay. because of the setup. Mm. But they could be doing something separate. Mm -hmm. I can ask Susan. You don't need to do that. Smith Buck was saying that they were going to renew that that process, but I haven't heard any update on that. No, this was the high school by Tampa High instead of the conference. I know, but Smith Buck was going to, you know, they had the program several years ago. What? And, and then they, they managed stopped. the compost. Pardon me? Where Smith Buck managed the compost. Accepted compost. Accepted compost. Okay. Yeah. 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 Right. <coughs> but they had said a couple of years ago. I can't remember how much longer that they were going to get back into doing it and taking on the management. They had stopped it for a long time, so I don't. But I haven't heard yet. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next time on the agenda is a uh, great study update. Um, not too much of an update. Um, the. There has been um, a number of public meetings um, associated with the City Council and subcommittees of the City Council um, that I've attended with the Mayor, um, which sort of culminated in the last full City Council meeting last Thursday on the, on the 17th in St. Patrick's Day. They took their first vote um, to approve the rates, 
and the vote was um, it was eight to one um, in, fa yeah. in favor. So there was one. No, um, yes, there were two. No, Councilor Adams was the only one that was opposed to it. Um, you know, it was, I think overall the the rate, um, the changes to the rate structure and the proposed increase has been very well received by the council. Um, the mayor really spent a lot of time explaining in detail how the new rate structure was arrived at and what the impacts were. And a number of scenarios were done for different um, local businesses. I think one of the councilors was concerned about impact on businesses. Mm -hmm. So the mayor spent quite a bit of time looking at certain um, th businesses of a variety of sizes in town to try to um, respond to some of those questions. And um, there were a lot of questions in various um, public meetings about it. But at the end, most of the city councilors had it seemed like they had a prepared statement in support of not only the rates, but support of taking care of the city's infrastructure. So it was good. I didn't say anything at the last meeting, but um, it was good actually just to sit there and hear support that like Councillor Klein and Councillor Bidwell and Councillor O'Donnell. I mean, a lot of them were very, um, very supportive of taking care of the city's infrastructure and realizes that it costs some money to do that and felt that the rate increases, which are in the two to three percent range, are certainly fine in order to accomplish those things. So, um, you know, it was nice, I think, to get that feedback. So the second, this, the next meeting will be the second vote on the rates, and um, we're expecting that it will, you know, that they'll pass. So, question, mm -hmm. Is there any talk of, of um, tinkering with that, or is it just what we reviewed as well? Pretty much what's been, pretty much what I presented to you. Mm -hmm. um, nothing, not one thing has changed. Okay. Not one thing has changed. Okay, next item is uh, director uh, selection update. And all I'm really at liberty to disclose is it's ongoing. Um, uh, we're really in phase two of the interviews, and that's just starting um, shortly. So, um, uh, and I'm encouraged by the process. Should I inquire how many interviews? You may inquire. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't believe uh, I, I'll just have to leave it as quite a few. Well, quite well, a few. It's more than one or two. Yes, it is. If you choose to interpret it that way. <laughs> well, there, there is public information because it was posted on the website for an extended period of time. So that mm -hmm. that was the public piece. So, um, <coughs> anything else? Gary, do you have anything? No. Wendy? Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you for <laughs> participating. Yes. Thank you. It'll be quieter and shorter with my absence. But, um, so is somebody I going to replace you? I, um, we were talking about that. You know, I, I did let the mayor's office know after our last meeting, um, you know, and said I thought of anybody, but I, you know, let them know that the, well, the, 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 the it's the expiration of the term. So it's time to appoint somebody or reappoint somebody, and I don't wish to be reappointed. So. Um, yeah, and I mentioned it to the mayor also. See. I just it was a pleasure working with you and getting to know mm -hmm. some of you a little bit better, and some of you, some at all. <laughs> I'm working with you too. Very thankful for your good work and process of getting things, information out to us and all. So, mm -hmm. Good luck. Thank you very much. I'll be watching you. On t I know you're not. On <laughs> yeah, we're on something. Yeah, we're are. on something. <coughs> if it wasn't really hard, you can find us. Okay. Jim, do you have anything else? I don't. BJ? Mm -hmm. MJ? I'm good. Dave? Okay. <laughs> Ro? Ro has. Something. Well, just, no, 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 really minor. I was just wondering if the uh, budget for the DPW has been completed for FY. 17. No. Oh. We are we're in the process of finalizing the budget. Um, we were delayed. The general fund budget was in pretty good shape and mm -hmm. just about wrapped up. The enterprise fund um, budgets were lagging behind because of the mm -hmm. discussion about the rates. Yeah. So um, we were working diligently this week to uh, try to um, get those in the state of being there complete. And then we need the second vote from the council on the rates and then everything will be in place. I think the reuse committee was hoping that the $7,000 we had left that had been allocated to reuse was going to um, be continued into the next fiscal year. Got it. 
Thanks for reminding me. <laughs> I have two things. One is um, uh, the study of the DPW management study has been posted. Um, the matrix study, as we've been calling it. Yeah. On the website? On the city's website. Oh, I don't know where. It's on, the, it's on the mayor's page, so if you go to the mayor's, okay. you go to the mayor's page, there's a number of studies that are posted there, including this one. Uh, have you read it? Yeah. I have. I have read it. Um, I, my personal reaction is I think it's, it's a decent report. Um, I, there are no big surprises in there. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think, I think it, I, I think that, that the challenge will be selecting which recommendations the city thinks are appropriate to proceed with and which ones they might want to delay proceeding with. And so we really don't know how that's going to be interpreted by the mayor and staff. Do you think it's appropriate for us to discuss it here? So I would, no, I would say that if you saw something in your, in the report that you thought was, um, important to discuss we should we should bring it up yes. I think I, I think we might be getting the process a little bit ahead of the city but on the other hand um, yeah I, I know it's of interest to everybody so uh, I would not object to that and then the other item is just the date of our next meeting and normally it would be on April 13th that's good for me if it's good for <laughs> serve again. <laughs> to carry it around. Yeah, I will. <laughs> I got my plans. Does it sound like the 13th works? I think that's okay. Yeah. All right. Take a motion to adjourn. So move. Second. We are adjourned.